right here, this is just normal. You can see where they did the trowel mark. So that's okay. We just put a little bit of a scrape on it, but you can see as we move over here next to it, these are big giant gouges that have been tore out right here. So we'll have to throw the lever over and let it float over those and that'll make it nice and flat. Welcome back. My name is Anon Hunt. Today we are going to be going over what you do when you are pulling the floor and it has been glued down. Now a lot of times the floor will just come right up with no problem. If it's on concrete, it can be a beast, but if it's on a wooden subfloor, you can almost bet that you're going to tear some of your subfloor up. It's almost impossible. Unless they've used inferior glue or they did it you know, at a room temperature that it wasn't supposed to be and the glue's just not drying or setting up. But for the most part, if you're going to glue wood down to a wood subfloor, just know that in the future, when it comes time to replace that floor, you may be replacing some subfloor too. You can do other things, and today we're gonna to show you how to get that floor prepped and flat if you've got big chunks missing out of it. We're gonna be throwing some floor leveler on there. You're not gonna to wanna to miss that. It's always fun to do stuff like this. So stay with us through the journey, and you'll see the steps that we take when it comes to fixing this floor. Now I'm going to show you some of what the floor looks like. Now if you've never torn out glued down engineered hardwood, let me tell you, you are in for a treat. Go ahead and cancel your trip to the gym because you will be pulling, prying, hammering, and stretching muscles you've never used before. Not to mention the backache that you will officially earn upon completion. But hey, if having nice things was easy, well, we'd all have nice things. So in order to have this floor 100% install ready, we've got our work cut out for us. The big question is where to start. I would start with removing all of the quarter round and baseboard if you're planning on replacing it. Engineered wood is not like hardwood. With hardwood, it is one solid piece of wood, so prying it up is not that hard. However, engineered wood is made of many layers of plywood with a premium veneer finish on top. So what does that mean? That means it comes up in small pieces the size of matchsticks. Any floor guy will tell you the best method is good old sweat and elbow grease. But there are some tips I've learned along my flooring journey that will save you the time of finding the mount yourself. To begin with, this floor has been weaved together one board at a time, so there is no beginning. We need to tear it out in sections. Start by opening windows and doors, tape off and plastic any doors that can lead into the rooms. Also, stuff towels under any doorways in the house to help cut down on the spread of the dust. Trust me, you're not going to get away without dust in your whole house, but any little bit will help. So you can get a good bite on this flooring, start by setting your circular saw at the depth of the old flooring. This will help you prevent from cutting through to the subfloor. Then go through the entire floor and cut it up into many rows. With the floor cut up, the boards are no longer weaved together in a locked position. You can now remove them one at a time with your tool of choice. Mine is the East Wing Pry Bar. You can try power tools, but I have found that the pry bar puts in the most work. We also use the spider bit with one of those scrapers that attaches to your sawzall, but it warms up and gets hot over time and the metal just ends up bending and eventually it just breaks. So. Right here, this is just normal. You can see where they did the trowel mark. So that's okay. We just put a little bit of a scrape on it, but you can see as we move over here next to it, these are big giant gouges that have been tore out right here. So we'll have to throw the level over and let it float over those and that'll make it nice and flat. So I'm telling you right now, if you have gouges in your floor that go down to like, you know, half inch, a quarter of an inch, that's not going to be very much wood left in there when that floor leveler goes on there. If it's a small hole or something like that, it'll float or it should be fine. But if you've got a huge hole, a big gouge that you've tore out, like, you know, 10 inches or bigger, it might be best just to go ahead and cut that section of the floor out and replace it with new subfloor. I know that stinks, but 
it's better than having it fail later on. All right, here we go. The most important thing is to pull as much of the hardwood as you can without leaving big holes in your floor and get rid of all the bumps. Using an oscillating tool with a scraper bit makes real short work of this glue. It kind of peels it off in sheets. But if you want to put in some hard work, a razor scraper will do the same job. Go ahead and put your favorite podcast on or your favorite financial YouTuber because you are going to be here a long time if that is your only method. Okay, so in prepping for this pour, it's important to know that this stuff seeks its own level just like water. So if there's a hole, a crack, or a crevice, it will find its way into it. So I use 100% silicone to cover all nail holes and seams. But when it comes to vents, if you don't want this stuff inside of them, you must build a wall. That's right. I learned the hard way a long time ago that this stuff will find its way into the walls and come out in the downstairs light fixtures or the light switches. I use cardboard and tape to build these dams. Make sure you seal off any cracks. And if you have to pour it over an area that is wall to wall, you can use great stuff foam to build up a dam underneath the baseboards. This will help you keep it contained in the room you are working in so your material doesn't run under the walls and onto the ground below. Once your wall is built, you need to tape it on the inside and tape it on the outside. You can also use silicone and put a bead around the edge of the cardboard. That'll probably work just as well. And it won't leave the tape underneath your floor leveler. I usually just cut a square and leave the tape in. Voila, one vent prepped. <laughs> Three more to go. Next, this is a primer. This stuff needs to be put on before you put your floor leveler, especially if you're doing it on concrete, as concrete is very porous. Take a paint roller and pour this primer out onto the floor, then just paint it on. Believe it or not, this stuff will go a long way, but you will need a few bottles if you're doing a big area. We used two and a half bottles for this three areas. It was a total of about 250 square feet. It starts to dry immediately, but I would take a 15 minute break or lunch at this point, just to be sure. Read the instructions to ensure proper insulation for your Here, situation. I'm just doing some last minute patches on cracks and nail holes. Ah, now we're getting to the good stuff. Now, if you've never used floor leveler before, it's pretty user friendly. Just look at the directions and mix it as directed and you shouldn't have any problems. However, don't take this as advice from me. It's just my personal experience. It says five quarts of water, but sometimes I like to add another half a quart or even six to let it be a little bit more runny. That way I have a little bit longer to spread it around if I'm trying to do more of a skim coat as opposed to an entire floor float. When you pour this stuff out, it feels kind of like water, but it starts flowing just like melted cheese or chocolate. You can see it is a little bit thick coming out of the bucket. And now, at first, this stuff cannot stand tall. It's a self-leveler, so on its own, it starts running and spreading just like water would do inside of a cup. Your job is to spread it out and make it smooth. You don't want big heels or humps, and you don't want dips. Just spreading it around with a trowel and letting it fall into the small chunks that you tore out in the floor you would be surprised how this thing will seek its own level and become flat after it's all done. Don't completely scrape all of the floor leveler away. Make sure you're leaving a thin coat that covers the entire floor. That way you've got a good, smooth, flat surface. A good idea when you're doing this is to have somebody outside mixing it for you so you can pour one layer right on top of the other layer and it kind of mixes in as one. However, with a two-man crew and Kelly being fast at work in the house trying to get the other rooms ready, I had to work fast and blend this stuff up and pour it in. Sometimes I don't use a whole bag, but as I said, I've used it so much, I'm pretty familiar with the consistency of what it needs to look like. 
Remember to make sure each area is very clean with a shop vac, that way you don't have chunks underneath your leveler when you go to float it. That can be so annoying. It's like having a piece of dust or something in your drywall mud when you're trying to fix a wall. Very annoying. We continued this process, prime, build walls for vents, and pour the flow leveler after we mixed it. All right, so I'm kind of recording this one on the fly, and we are in Bellevue, Tennessee. It's been a wild couple crazy three or four days, you know, with uh, our ligator getting banned from Twitter and me getting banned from Facebook, and no, I'm just kidding. I'm not really kidding, that really happened. Anyway, we are here putting this floor in. Well, that's what we were supposed to do. This was a one day job, and it was supposed to be come in and lay this drop and lock wood, but I like to call U floor. You guys know about that U floor stuff. Anyway, we got here, and it was glued down wood tear out. Now, I don't know if you've ever done that or not, but it, it is not fun. It's not fun on concrete. It's definitely not fun on wooden subfloors. Uh, it tends to tear up the subfloor quite a bit, put big giant holes and everything in there. So we're in here and we, like I say, we are on day five of a one day job and we've had to do it in sections. She's got this big giant table out there. I mean, right now the dining room is ready to be laid because I had spent all day drying so I could start on that end of the house, running my wood this way. And then she comes up to me about 15 minutes and says, hey, I wonder if we could run the wood this way. And now the floor's not completely dry that way, so we're gonna go ahead and do this last pour, and I guess we're gonna come back tomorrow and start this install. But right now, Kelly's over there cutting quarter rounds so that we can be ready tomorrow. We don't have to measure it and cut it and all that. It'll be ready to go, one, two, three, four, four. You know how we do it, we number. Anyway, hope you guys are enjoying so far. I'm gonna get back in here and do this last pour. You guys hang with me. I'll let you watch, let's go. As you guys are pouring this stuff in sections, a fan will help this stuff dry a little bit quicker. Hey, time is money. And if we can save time, then we'll save some money. You shouldn't have a problem if you have to pour it over a section that is already dry. You can use a trowel to feather this stuff out very thin and blend it right in with the previous coating. We left the small section dry at the door, just so we had a place to put our foot and step over the wet onto the dry when going in and out of the house. Once everything was dry, it was time to go pull all of our walls, vacuum, and cut all the tape away. Man, I'm telling you, this floor is flat just like glass. Remember, the floor was awful chunky before you started. And as I specified, if you have any chunks left in your leveler, they will stick out. Use a hand scraper just to level it off and make it flat again. No needing going crazy on this step. Hey, I know it's been a long six days and we are ready to throw this floor in, but we cannot forget the fundamentals of floor installation. If our floor has a moisture content higher than 12%, we can't install. Lucky for us, we are good to go. Just a few scrapes in a couple small areas and we're ready to roll this underlayment out. With the floor super smooth and flat, it was time to get rolling on this floor. I tell you, it really does feel good to install on a flat surface. It takes away all the headaches. I won't bore you with how to install engineered wood on a new flat surface. That's for another video, besides you guys can go check that out. However, I did want to take this time to thank each and every one of you who has supported me over this past year, either through subscribing or just liking the video or sharing it. You've truly helped me grow beyond all the things I ever expected. And if this is your first time, and this video brought you any value, either through entertainment or you learned something, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and be sure to turn on notifications. That way YouTube will notify you when I put out more videos. I think that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Oh wait, hold on. I do have something, a quick tip. TikTok is good for something.
As I showed in one of my other videos, a good way to find the center of the toilet hole is to put a piece of tape over it and measure three and a half from both sides to the center. Well, on TikTok, if you find that center on your three boards and put them together, you can drive a screw through there, pull your tape measure out to three and five eighths and lock it in, and take a pencil and just swivel it around. Man, I tell you what, it is dead accurate, and it makes short work of cutting toilet holes. Well, that's your tip for the day. Okay, now it's officially a wrap. Thank you guys again for watching, and until next time, take care and stay safe. Peace.